you certainly can't fix a true scoliosis, but it can be well compensated for. A true scoliosis represents a change in the shape of the spine, an anatomic shape that cannot be simply unbent, not without surgery anyways. In a true scoliosis, though there are other types of scoliosis, but we're not talking about those, a true scoliosis will have a wedge-shaped vertebrae. So it's short on one side, relatively longer on the other side. And because we have that one short side, we're weight-bearing supposedly equally, we'll tend to drop into that short side, we'll side bed into it, and this creates what we call a lateral curvature. And that's what we call a scoliosis. Were it facing forward, you'd call it a kyphosis. Now, depending on how extreme this curve is, maybe it's running a good portion of the spine, or maybe it's only a small amount of vertebrae, depending on how extreme it is, it will cause greater and lesser motion effects and postural effects. In a really simple way, the scoliosis is connected into many of the other muscular systems of the body. So quite directly, if we, if we look at this, let's say I want to move my arm up into what we call abduction. I'm, I'm taking the arm away, I'm abducting it away from the body. Well, as that scapula, this blue thing here, as it comes around the body like this, it actually has to create stretch in between the scapula and the spine that is attached to. So there's going to be some muscular stretch within this region. It, this could be like the lower traps. It could be the rhomboids. It's kind of a generalized idea of a muscle at this point. But that has to stretch out. And now, because we have just an altered shape here in the scoliotic curve, it's not going to as easily allow flexibility. It's not as easily going to allow movement away from it. And so this might slightly, it'll be slightly, slightly limit the amount of mobility in that arm on this one particular movement. We could go a little higher up, and here we have the neck, and this again could represent a few different muscles, usually the erectors, but they'll attach from a low point to a high point. And so if I want to take my head away, I want to now side bend my head, because many of these muscles are all attached into lower points of the thorax where we've placed our theoretical scoliosis. As I try to take my head away, this point will resist. It will resist this type of a movement. And so we might see also limited neck and head motion from something lower down. It's going to be not nearly as much as the local area of the scoliosis, but it still can be there. Same thing we could talk about even with the pelvis and lower body. As we try to bring the spine and the pelvis away from that scoliotic curvature, from that bend to the right, you might see it resist in very much the same way. Again, it could be through the erector muscles that are give or take right about here, it could be through the QL. And simply because it's attached, it's gonna change our full, our complete ability to move and to be able to do so as successfully as possible. Again, minor curvatures will not show up as much. You may never know you have a scoliosis, in fact, if it's minor enough, but the bigger ones tend to cause bigger problems. That being said, the body is incredibly well built to compensate. And compensation is actually a good thing when it's done well. Sometimes we see compensation as a bad thing, when it, especially when it comes to back pain and biomechanics, but compensation can actually be very good. Remember, this is non-negotiable, this scoliosis. This was decided before we were born, usually, in a true scoliosis. And so it means the body has to do its best to keep moving and keep functioning despite all that. So when we have healthy tissue above and below it, let's pick, you know, again, the neck and the lower back. When we have very healthy tissue above and below, even though this curve exists here, we can add a little bit of extra flexibility below, bending it maybe a little bit more to the other side, and above, bending it a little more to the other side, and you might find that it has very little negative effects. The scoliosis, which could be a problem, actually doesn't exert any detriments. We still get a relatively full range of motion. We still can bend one side and the other, and though we have some favorites in some areas, overall the body's moving pretty well. 
and this is good, this is functional compensation, not dysfunctional compensation. So when you have a scoliosis or when you just have a tendency to, to favor one particular side, you might find that strengthening and gaining better movement, however you want to do that, gaining better movement through the rest of your body actually does a very good job at compensating for what's lacking in one particular area. So the scoliosis itself might have no direct work done on it, but you could still see a lot of positive functional improvements.